Hey everyone! Today we're going to be talking about feedback. Uh, it's something that I don't think I need to convince any of you of, that it's a good idea to get feedback, whether it be from your customers about how well you're performing, um, whether it be from your colleagues around uh, what you're working on. Feedback loops are something that I work with a lot when I start to help teams move towards more agile software delivery practices. And it's something that's becoming more and more prevalent uh, just throughout the business generally as we try and understand how well we're performing in the eyes of our customers. But I wanted to give you, I came across a really cool example this week because I think sometimes it can be really easy to talk about what feedback means in terms of going and doing a survey for our customers, going and doing focus groups, you know, talking to customers, asking for feedback. And it's not necessarily the only way that we can get feedback. There's this bigger, broader concept around how do we get more feedback more often? How do we get some kind of understanding of how well we're performing closer to the moment that we're doing the thing so that we know we're heading in the right direction? Uh, one of my colleagues, Gary O'Brien, love his work, still good buddies, uh, talks about weaker signals and this idea of how do you tune yourself into smaller signals, weaker signals, so that you can start to action those before you have to see a really big signal and then respond to it, before you get to the end of a project and you get feedback whether it's working or not, how do you tune yourself into those weaker signals that are happening along the way? So the way that feedback normally works in a traditional project is that we go along and we do our design our requirements, you know, we gather input from people, we go through a, a build process, uh, we do a whole bunch of testing and we launch the thing many months or years later and at that point it's live in production and uh, we get feedback from customers. So we're not we, we used to take a long time to get that feedback loop to complete from when we first had the idea all the way through to when we actually got it working for customers. Um, that used to take a long time. Uh, and you'll find now that teams are measuring what we would call cycle time, which is that time from idea to value. And in an effort to try and make that shorter, to shorten the distance between when we have the idea and when we deliver value for customers so that we get more feedback more often. We're looking for those weaker signals that we can respond to rather than having to do the whole thing and then get feedback on whether the thing was a big idea, was a great idea or not. How do we do smaller pieces along the way to know we're heading in the right direction? And so that's where uh, agile software delivery sort of comes in because you're talking about Maybe we're building something within a two-week to sort of six-week period. We're putting it out there. Customers are using it. We're getting that feedback, and then that helps us to reassess and redetermine our direction as a result of how well that's working. And so that feedback cycle gets shorter. That time between when we had the idea and when the value is delivered becomes smaller, and we're able to respond and react more quickly. And that might take us down a different path to a more traditional project where we had... Uh, had this big idea up front and then it took us months and years to actually get it into production and see what happened when we got it working. Well, that's all well and good. And often when we talk about feedback, we'll talk about, as I said, customer surveys or maybe an MPS survey at the end of an episode or a focus group to try and ask customers what's going on. But I want to take that concept more broadly because feedback's not just about talking to your customers. Feedback's about, it's that response in the moment. It's those cues that you're taking from your environment that influence where you go next with the work that you're doing. And I've been working with a team this week who were trying to improve their process for cashing up their till, their register at the end of the day. So if you work in a cafe or um, a shop or a, a front desk where you're taking money off customers for, say, retail items or maybe you're selling tickets for something. You, you've got the, you know, maybe you're in a supermarket, uh, but that if you're working that desk where you're taking payment from customers, whether it be with a card or cash, 
Uh, and at the end of the day, you're having to do some kind of reconciliation process, this cash up process. I, I know that anyone who's worked in this space will know how frustrating it is that you are almost never perfect. Almost always you're under or you're over, somebody took too much money, somebody didn't record a payment in the system, like these mistakes happen, right? And the frustrating thing with this process is that the only way that you know whether or not you've got a problem is when you hit the end of the day and you do this cash up, you count your cash, you check what you took on FPOS and you check that versus what the system thinks you were supposed to have and you find that you've got a discrepancy. But that only happens at the end of your shift. That might be a four hour or an eight hour window. By the time you get to the end, you've got no idea where that happened. Maybe you've got lots of people working out of the same shared account. You don't know who had the problem. You don't know when the problem occurred. And then the finance team get on your case because you're under or over by a certain amount. But there's no real, there's no signal about where you go for improvement. And so what normally happens is we say, well, right, we're going to try and work out who made the mistake. And we go down this path of maybe we put in place individual accounts so that we're not shared accounts. Um, and we try to go down this diagnosis path because the logic goes that if we find the person who made the mistake, then we can correct that mistake through training or whatever. But I fundamentally disagree with that. And I had this conversation this week that helped me kind of undo that a little bit further. So if we go down a path of trying to find out who made the mistake, it doesn't really help because the reality is that anyone can make a mistake. If you start trying to work out who made the mistake on a particular day, sure, you might get somewhere down the path in terms of retraining that person or, you know, but focusing on the individual doesn't solve the systemic issue. The systemic issue is that we don't know when the mistake happened. We don't know until we do cash up at the end of the day after eight, 10 hours, 12 hour shift, we don't know that we've got a problem until we get to the very, very end. The problem that I want to solve is how do we know that we've got a problem before that final point, before the end of the day? And so the question that I posed the technology team that I was working with this week was, how, how would we do that? And they said, well, you'd, you'd have to count cash every 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 time you wanted to know. So maybe you could count the cash once an hour, or maybe you could count the cash once every couple of hours. Okay, but you're still having to count the cash. Like That's a process in itself. That'll take you 20 minutes to do. That's not realistic to do that in the moment. And you still, like you might break that cycle time down into sort of a four-hour window where you're able to see that something happened within the four hours. But the real question for me is how do I know every single transaction whether or not I'm on point. Because if I can understand that at every time that I make a transaction, then I'm able to change my behavior in the moment. And I'm able to fix it in the moment so that I don't then have a problem at the end of the day. And then once you start to ask that type of question, you move away from all of the proposed solutions around locking down access, more stringent training, you know, nailing people when they get it wrong. And you start to move into a really interesting space of, well, could you have a machine that weighs the cash in the till so you know how much money is there every moment? Do you have a change machine that dispenses money that takes that? Do you have that you, you start to get into this space where, the solutions are less focused on correcting an individual's behavior and they are more focused on understanding what's going on so that you could then make a change in the moment. And so what it does is it frees up that human behavior element. It focuses on the systemic issue and understanding where in time, which is the real problem we're trying to solve, rather than focusing on an individual and then potentially another individual makes a mistake further down the track. So I wanted to share that example with you because I think sometimes it's really easy to talk about software projects and customer feedback and all of those sorts of things, but I want you to take this concept of feedback loops and more feedback more often so that you can change your behavior, you can change your approach, you can change your work 
want you to take that concept and apply it to everything that you do so that any business process, any project, any of these situations, when you apply that mentality around how do we generate more feedback more often to help you understand what's going on so that you can change your behavior in the moment, correct those mistakes or potentially avoid them altogether. So that was what I wanted to share with you today. Um, let me know what you think. Hit me up with a comment below. I know that a lot of my audience, a lot of you are in sort of IT projects and those sorts of things. And so you're not necessarily getting out there in the operations of the business. So let me know how that lands for you. I'm really interested to see you take what you've learned in your software delivery practices, but actually just apply it to business change, right? You want to break out of this bubble of just technology and IT change and break into how do we enable our entire organization to think and feel and work the way that we've learned to um, with some of these more, I'm going to call them business agile practices. So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having a wonderful day. Hit me up with a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, let's get out there and smash it this week. Go and have some fun.